average mind. The Supreme Court is the highest judicial tribunal in a political unit in the United States. The court was established in 1789, which also allowed Congress power in creating inferior courts. The act of the court was signed by President George Washington, and in this act, there must be be account for six justices serving the court until dead or retired. The Supreme Court justices were picked out by the President of the United States and must also be confirmed by or denied by the U.S. Senate. In order for there to be accommodation and a sense of order, there was a person who was the Chief Justice, who was the highest officer, and who was responsible for setting the agenda for weekly meetings and controlling the Supreme Court. In 1864, Salmon Chase was the sixth Supreme Court Chief of Justice. He was born on January 13, 1808. He later graduated from Dartmouth, studying in law, and was a school headmaster in Washington, D.C. He sought out to fight for the rights of everyone, as he treated everyone equally, due to his religion of Episcopalian. In 1840, he found his way onto the City Council of Cincinnati. During his time in city council, he helped create the Free Soil Party, which got him elected into U.S. Senate in 1849. After this time, he then served under Lincoln, gaining his trust and his desire for politics. Lincoln gave him the opportunity to become the sixth chief of justice after the death of Roger Taney. During his time as chief, he overviewed the Reconstruction era, era, heard out arguments that had to do with in the sand city of the Union and fought for African American civil rights. The Supreme Court case Katz versus the United States was between Charles Katz and the United States government. The case was taken to the Supreme Court and argued on October 17, 1967, and was decided on December 18, 1967. The case originated when Katz was under surveillance by the FBI for a suspicious activity. Katz made a living by placing bets for interstate gamblers and then keeping a share of the winnings. Since it was illegal to do this under federal law, he would make business arrangements through public telephone booths along Sunset Boulevard. They had planned to bug three of the booths he had used regularly to catch him on tape, placing one of his bets. The FBI had placed a listening device on top of the telephone booth and recorded his conversation so that they would be able to use it against him in court. Charles Katz was convicted under an eight-count indictment for illegally transmitting information over telephone lines. The petitioner tried to have the evidence suppressed under the Fourth Amendment because he was not aware that he was being recorded. It was a violation of his rights. This was denied because the court agreed with the FBI, stating that there was no physical intrusion in entering the telephone booth. His petition also went up against the Supreme Court precedent, Olmstead v. United States. The case went to the Supreme Court because the way the government went about bugging the telephone booth violated the Fourth Amendment right, which protects people from unreasonable searches and seizures by the government. Since the government taped Katz's conversation without him knowing, it violated this amendment. The Court of Appeals was able to reject the contention that the evidence was inadmissible and Satori was granted. The court ruled that Katz was entitled to the Fourth Amendment protection for his conversations, even if they were in a public area. They did not have to physically intrude the booth for it to bring the amendment to play. Justice Potter Stewart wrote that, The Fourth Amendment protects people, not places. They stated that using a public phone is private in nature, and when someone is making a call, no government agency should be able to listen to the call unless they have a probable cause. The Fourth Amendment defines what the right of privacy is and how the government should never be able to break that, unless there is evidence that points to illegal activity. After the case, it was made known that the Fourth Amendment was equally applicable to physical searches as well as media searches. The Supreme Court case between the New York Times versus the United States first started in 1971 when Robert McNamara ordered a secret study to be done at the Pentagon about the 
effects of the United States policy has had on the Vietnam War. After a few years, they created what is now called the Pentagon Papers. And Daniel Ellsberg, who worked at the Pentagon, came across this and was quite disturbed about what he had found. He had found that the government was keeping secrets from the public, such as there was illegal bombing and many deadly chemicals that were used in the Vietnam War. Ellsberg then decides to leak 43 volumes of the 47 volumes that he had found and printed over 7,000 copies that revealed the truth behind what the government was trying to hide in the war. He then leaked it to the New York Times and on June 13, 1971, the first articles appeared. Richard Nixon has saw this and was furious by what he was reading. He then sent out a prior restraint which suspended the New York Times from printing any more copies. After Daniel Ellsberg had saw what was going on, he then decided to leak more documents to the Washington Post so they would print more excerpts showing the public what was really going on. The government then filed for another restraint on the Washington Post, but this time it was denied. The government then immediately sent out a court order and fought as they thought it threatened national security. This was the first time in American history that the government had successfully ordered a prior restraint on security grounds. The New York Times then fought back, saying that it was their right to do so and how the First Amendment, which is the freedom of speech and freedom of the press, gives them the right to. By June 18, 1971, Federal Judge Murray Gerfain set up the first the court hearing, where they had decided it was best to go to the Supreme Court and by June 26, they were in front of the Supreme Court. Once the New York Times and the United States were in front of the Supreme Court, they argued that it was a violation of the First Amendment and how they felt that they should let the public know what was happening. They stated how the First Amendment guaranteed a freedom of the press protects the newspaper in the publication of the documents. They argued that the press must be free to inform the American people and they argued how the government had failed to show that publication of the Pentagon Papers would endanger national security. The United States then fought back and stated how the First Amendment does not guarantee an absolute freedom of the press, rather especially when the national security is involved. The United States wanted to strike a balance between the fundamentally important right to a free press and the equally important duty of the government to protect the nation, which is allowing the publication of the documents would establish a dangerous precedent for future cases involving national security. After hearing both sides, the Supreme Court then decided that on June 30, 1971, the court rules favored 6 to 3 of the New York Times and claimed that the prior restraint was unconstitutional. The court then decided that the government hadn't, hadn't been punished for its actions. The Supreme Court sided with the New York Times because it was expressed as the First Amendment. And although the justices of the Supreme Court thought that the New York Times had probably gone too far in publishing the Pentagon pa Papers, they found nothing in the law to prevent the newspaper from doing so. This today stands as one of the most important freedom of the press case in American history. The Supreme Court sided with the New York Times because it was expressed as the First Amendment.